I'm not working off too flushed out of a script uh, because I want to get this video out pretty fast while the hype around Detective Pikachu and the let's go Eevee, let's go Pikachu stuff is happening so I can cash in on that good good <laughs> search engine optimization. So there's this idea in eco-criticism but also just like in life uh, called the nature culture binary and it's exactly what it sounds like. On one hand you have like humans and technology and culture and cities and on the other hand you have nature or in the earth and it's basically just like one way of understanding the world and it's the way that a lot of people do and a lot of stuff gets put in the boxes on one of one hand or the other of the, the, the technology and the nature like you get men on this side because they're better at math and technology and women on this side because they're nurturing and these ideas can be harmful uh, way back when it was oh we are humans we are men specifically and it's our prerogative to take over nature and use it for ourselves because it's something that we can do because we're superior, but then even when the script gets flipped, it's usually still working along this binary, so you'll have, oh, women are more in touch with nature and that's a good thing, even though like that idea is maybe not 100% fleshed out or true. Just because it seems like it's being subversive, it's still usually working along this framework and it can be hurtful for other reasons. This whole nature culture binary is a very Western concept. It has roots in the Enlightenment and Cartesian ways of thinking and doesn't necessarily apply to places like Japan, which finally brings us to Pokemon. So Pokemon takes this idea of the nature culture binary and slam dunks it into the nearest trash can. If you're going to attempt to enforce this binary in any way, Pokemon are basically part of nature and humans are culture. But the core tenet of the entire franchise is the interconnectedness and almost symbiotic relationship between humans and Pokemon. If, if you've ever watched like a single episode of the anime, it's like the only thing the narrator ever says. Even in the Detective Pikachu trailer, it, the opening line is like, Welcome to Rhyme City, a celebration of the harmony between humans and Pokemon. Rhyme City is the a testament to the harmony between humans and Pokemon, or it's like something. It's really important. <laughs> that entire concept is really important, it's interconnectedness. Pokemon are part of nature, so you have types and the typings, you know, you have like water and grass and fire and like just like very like nature-centric typings, but then you also have typings like steel and psychic and fighting, which at least to me, all seem closer to being a human-centric or culture-centric typing. There are also specific Pokemon that are based off of and sometimes even directly came from human-made objects. Klefki, the garbage one. Trubbish? Trubbish. Honedge? Honedge? The sword one? Even like Voltorb, which I mean, we're pretty sure that's like a Pokeball, right? The Pokeball that got possessed or something, right? They're all human-made objects, but by the virtue of being Pokemon, they're also natural. And most of the time, the people trying to enforce any sort of nature culture binary in the Pokemon world are part of an evil team. <laughs> so think about like your team Rocket, your team Galactic, your team Flare. They're asserting superiority over nature much in the way that I talked about earlier. I haven't actually played black and white, but from my understanding, the evil team in that game is a flipping of the script where they want Pokemon to be good on their own without humans, but this is still enforcing the nature culture binary. And the ultimate example of this is Team Magma and Team Aqua. That's their whole thing is nature is better and we're gonna make more water or culture is humans are better and we're gonna make more land. and there's a distinct line between them. That's their, whole, that's their whole thing. But you as the player or whoever the protagonist is breaks up their entire plan because enforcing the nature culture binary does not fit with the philosophy of the Pokemon world. Within this world, the nature culture binary basically doesn't exist. I know you're probably asking me then like, why did you spend the entire 
first half of the video explaining what it was if it's not applicable to Pokemon. It's because it's, it's a worldwide phenomenon, you dingus. This franchise is so popular all over the world, including places that think this way, that think in terms of the nature culture binary. So by exposing this other philosophy to those places, they're expanding the worldview of people who live there. And I think that's cool. <laughs> Big thank you to Megan for helping me edit this and for adding graphics. Um, I don't have anything to plug. I'm a grad student. 